Hey guys, welcome to Fiddlework Gaming, I'm Justin, and today we're going to get started building this um, miniature house. So um, I've been working on this project over the last uh, couple of weeks, I'd say, and um, yeah, it's basically kind of like a terracotta house you could use for maybe D&D, you could use for Blood and Plunder, or any kind of... Um, miniature 28 millimeter miniature war game or role-playing game that it has a kind of roman feel or maybe tropical spanish um, that kind of thing um yeah so just to give you guys an overview it has a removable lid and you can see inside i did some floorboards it's pretty simple and the outside is largely like stucco um it has a window here which is closed and it doesn't open um, and a door that is not, um, it's a, it's a bit big. I'll probably make a smaller door next time. Um, it has also has an entrance around the back, which I didn't make a door for yet. I'm not, I might just leave it open. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, basically it's a pretty easy piece of terrain to make. Um, the roof just goes on. So, and you can use it for like, like I said, role playing, war gaming, whatever. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing that today. Um, we'll see how far we get, but, uh, hopefully we can get at least, um, the kind of, uh, stucco on the outside and the roof glued on. Um, but yeah, essentially I'll put this aside. Um, uh, basically what I made the base with is this foam core, um, material here. So it's, um, basically poster board. Um, one second. Yeah, so it's poster board, uh, just like paper with foam in between. And I cut this out using a hobby knife, and I'm just going to put it on a base, glue it with some PVA glue, and then uh, I'll put the roof on. I've already made the roof, because we're going to be putting on the tiles, and I'll, I'll show that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I still haven't cut out the windows and the doors for the... Um, for the rest of the house, so maybe we're gonna go ahead and try that. All right, so let me get my trusty hobby knife here. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting the windows. So I've already marked it, so you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And I'm just cutting on um, mat board here, just so I don't go right into my desk. And yeah, we're just gonna basically um, just cut along. I'll probably use a ruler. It helps to have a little bit of a straight edge um, when I cut. And then I'll just cut along the edge. Just like so. And for this poster board, you don't have to go too deep. You can kind of make a light incision. And then later on you can you don't need the ruler for the next part once you've already made a kind of a line in it. It should just follow the line until you cut it with your hobby knife. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. So these little hobby knives are great. I used to use uh, I used to use like an exacto knife, uh, like or a cutter like this box cutter, but these are a bit hard to work with um, just because. First of all, I don't find them. Maybe you can get better quality ones, but the the one I have is not that sharp. And this one's a lot sharper. And also, um, it's a little more easy to work with, like a pen. All right, so. And I'll just cut along the top. go. I'm just taking my time here, trying to get clean lines, trying not to break any foam, and it's almost cut through, might be just the corner, there we go. It's not quite cut through on this side, so we'll just tap that down, score it a little bit more, and watch I don't cut my finger off. And there we go. 
So we have a door frame here. Oh, hi, low life. Thanks for joining. Um, it's just you so far. <laughs> it might be a, a lighter stream today. I know some of our regular viewers are away, um, but that's okay. We have uh, you at least. So I was just explaining that um, building this miniature house, I'll just show it again. Um, this kind of terracotta Spanish style slash Roman style house. Um, and we're going to be trying to make it today. Uh, we'll see how far we get. We won't get it painted, but hopefully we'll get most of the construction built. And then we'll do some palm tree stuff later. I can give you a quick preview of my palm trees, wherever they are. Ah, here they are. So you I probably see these in a, we used them in the, in the battle report last time. Um, but yeah, we'll be kind of doing this kind of stuff later. And these are just cheap uh, palm trees that I bought from the aquarium. Um, what kind of foam? Uh, this is just uh, basically poster board foam, um, like you would use for like school projects, uh, like science fair projects. Um, I think it's called foam board, is what they call it. Um, it's pretty cheap, you can get it anywhere, dollar store, Michael's, um, any kind of hobby or arts and crafts store. Um, so yeah, I've cut out our door frame there and we got some windows to cut out. We'll go ahead and do that. And... Whoops. There we go. I might just do this freehand, see how I can do it freehand. Oh, you remember that tree? Yeah, we, um, I think maybe I showed it during a painting episode too, as a kind of show and tell. So we're just, um, just cutting the windows out here. For the one I made, I didn't do any windows, or open windows, I should say. Um, this one I'm going to have open windows, so this one's going to be a bit more drafty. And we're almost there. Oops. Now it's kind of okay if you don't do the windows too clean because this it's kind of a, these buildings are kind of hobbles, so it doesn't have to be too tidy. They're not, they're not any luxury mansions that we're building here today. So I've almost got this window kind of cut out and maybe I'll just punch it through there we go so there we go we got one window done we have one more on the other side and then we'll be good to go Low life is it a bit clearer this time? I upped the resolution, so hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's a little easier to see. I'm trying it out. Um, hopefully my stream doesn't crash. But we're testing the limits um, just to see how good it looks, or how good it can look, I should say. All right, so we're just uh, finishing off this last window here, and then we'll get to gluing. Let's see how we're doing here. All right. It's a bit tough to get through this uh, foam board sometimes, but it's worth it in the end. Just gotta kinda score it several times and then it'll hopefully fall out in one nice piece. 
There we go. We can just kind of push it out. And yeah, we've got two little nice windows. So we're just going to go ahead and glue this. Um, just using regular old uh, PVA glue. Actually, I'm using wood glue. I kind of like wood glue for um, structures or like when I'm gluing joints or terrain and stuff like that. Um, little bright. Uh, is the scene too bright or am I too bright? <laughs> yeah, I have this, uh, this, I'm trying to give you guys, get you guys a good view of the terrain so you can see, but I can turn down the brightness if it's a little annoying for sure. All right. So we've got this and I'm just going to glue this together with some wood glue. It's a little stronger. Um, when doing joints. Oh, this is just matte board. So this is just like, uh, you can use um, one of those self healing mats that are used for arts and crafts. Um, they're a little expensive, so I don't have one. Uh, this is just regular. I should probably get one because I would use it all the time. But this is just um, regular old matte board for like photos. And I've got two layers so I don't puncture right through. And that way I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't puncture right through and I shouldn't dull my knife too, too much. Um, all right, we're just gonna glue. Maybe we'll start with, yeah, we'll start with the, uh, start with a short edge. Uh, we'll start with the long edges first. It seems that might work better. Gonna glue these long edges down. Okay, maybe I'll turn the maybe I'll turn the brightness down just for just for when I'm doing this and then brighten it back up later. It's just so you can don't have to look at white on white. And then I'm just gluing this down. I already pre-measured this and pre-cut it, so it should fit fairly nice. Uh, and then we'll do the door. Yeah, we we'll get we'll kind of get color. We'll get some brown. <laughs> uh, we'll work with some brown stuff later, and then. Um, when we're doing the trees, we'll probably have more color. All right, and then I'm just going to glue this on here. And if you feel like this glue is pretty strong and pretty sticky, so I don't really have to pin it uh, with like toothpicks or anything. For some joints that are tricky, you can pin with toothpicks and that'll help the glue hold better until it's dry. But for this, I don't think we need it, so. So I can just glue it as is. And it should, hopefully, uh, I've planned it, by the time this is dry and we work on the other stuff, uh, or by the time we finish working on the other stuff, this should be dry so we can put on the uh, stucco-like material. Whoop. There we go. <laughs> Brown is better than nothing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. We've got one last wall, and then we'll be good to go. And then for this, you don't have to worry about being too f finicky. Um... As long as you get some glue on there. If it bubbles out a bit, that's okay. Because we're going to put the stucco on later. And you can always wipe it off if you're really annoyed about it. But it's okay to be a bit generous with the glue. All right. And then we've got a little start of a house right here. Looks pretty good. We've got a little roof. Oh, it's 
probably go on this way, maybe? Uh, could go on either way, actually. This is a square house, so we can go on whatever way we want. Okay. Um, we'll let this dry for now. And then hopefully it'll dry enough so we can work with it. And we'll work on the roof. So for the roof, I've just used... Um, so you can see they're, they're kind of the same shape, uh, base shape. For this tile, I've just used a pizza box lid. It's just corrugated cardboard. Um, so I'll show you guys. So yeah, it's basically just a pizza box lid. And then I've taken one, one side of the... Um, basically it's like a film of paper on top. And I've kind of taken that off. There's still a little bit of paper that kind of got left over, but we can take that off later on. And then we just need to cut cut the strips. I've already marked it. Um, so we just cut these and then we're gonna lay them over top of each other on the roof. And I just need to get my scissors. Um, scissors are in the kitchen, I think. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go grab my scissors. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. Yeah, it is a interesting use of a pizza box lid. Um, I didn't I didn't come up with this. I saw this on YouTube before. I forget what channel it was, but some people used. Um, they actually made it more fancy. They used like cor. I don't know if it was pizza box, but they used like a corrugated cardboard, and they kind of like actually took the corrugated pieces off and layered them on top of each other, so it really looked like tiles. I've just kind of laid down the strips, so mine's not completely accurate. You can see like strips visible strips of tiles versus like single tiles laid on top of each other. But if you really want to get uh, detailed and accurate, you could just rip off kind of these. You'd probably need a bigger piece of um, corrugated cardboard, something more heavy like a box, but you could just like basically rip. I don't know if you can see here, but you can like peel this off and then just like layer it um, almost like shingles like, well, tiles, I guess, um, terracotta tiles. Are they called tiles or shingles? I'm not sure um, when they're terracotta. Anyways, so yeah, well, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna do it the easy way. And cut this. So we're gonna cut these strips. We're just going to cut them all the way across so I have lots to work with. And these ones I actually measured. The other one I didn't really measure. I kind of eyeballed it. but So this one should be should look a little better. And I'll just keep cutting. Cutting along. I've got three strips on each side of the roof, six strips in total, and I'll just layer them. There. And I've cut these about, I think it was a little over two centimeters thick. Depends what kind of roof you want, so it's like, it's not no rule to how thick these should be, but two centimeters looked about right for the thickness um, when I was laying these tiles. And then we're just gonna finish off this last strip, then we'll be able to lay it on the roof. That's probably good enough. There we go. So we've got these uh, strips now. Now we're just gonna measure the roof and we'll try to get clean sections. 
Um, so we don't have to fiddle with this, uh, with this. It's, I kind of got some paper that's left on here that, um, didn't come off when I ripped it, but that's okay. Cause what I did with this one is I just, those piece of paper that got kind of left on, I just used them as like little moss spots. So I just painted them kind of green and put some flock on. Um, and that way I can kind of cheat and I don't have to take everything off the roof. So we'll probably leave some on and just use it as like mossy areas. And this is the part where we're probably gonna kind of eyeball a little bit. And we'll just make it maybe, hmm. We'll overlap it a little bit, maybe right there. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit annoying. Um, hopefully it'll stay locked on for now. I think it was with the pizza box. I was moving it all back and forth. Forth. My lens doesn't have the um, smoothest autofocus, but that's okay. Um, is that good? Let's see. How much do we, we probably want to cut one more tile off so we can overlap it. Not so much. Let's see how that looks. That's probably okay. So we'll do uh, about this length of tile. And then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just keep cutting. The beauty about having to do roofs like this is you don't really have to measure once you know the length because all the corrugated parts should be the same, um, the same length. And you just have to cut down the valley of uh, the piece that you want. So that's one side of the roof. Do the other side. I'll just double check the other side to make sure I didn't accidentally do one side longer. But nope, that looks pretty good. So we got this. That piece is a little... Hmm, this piece is okay. I'm just trying to get rid of all the pieces that have weird paper on them. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I could lock the focus, but um, but I think it might cause things to be blurry later on. So we'll keep it like that for now. If it starts, autofocus starts going out of control again, I might lock it later, but. Um, oop, this piece is actually no good. It has a little bit of a corner. So maybe we'll throw that out and use this piece. There we go. How's that piece? Um, this one's a little weird. It's a little longer than I thought. There we go. And we've got one more piece. We'll use this one over here. So now we've got three kind of tiles on each side. Maybe we'll clean this up a little bit. Rip some of that paper off. There we go. Keep a little bit on, but we'll rip some off. Because mm, this piece got a little bit crazy with the amount of paper that's still on it. Okay, you don't need to take all of it off, just a little bit. That's probably good, and that's probably good on this side. Okay, so we're just gonna glue this on. Um, and we'll just do one tile at a time. Some of these tiles are squished, a little squished on one side, so we'll make that, we'll put that at the bottom so it looks a little better. And we're just gonna glue this on the roof. Now this is a very easy and cheap project. Um, I didn't really buy anything expensive for this. I don't know what the most expensive thing was. Probably the the grout that I'll be using later. But it, again, it's not it's not crazy, and you get a whole bunch of it for for buying it. Um, yeah, I guess the pizza was probably the most expensive. <laughs> Um, single item, but you don't need to, you could just raid the, raid your recycling bin if you want. Um, 
You might get some weird looks, but that's okay. Let's see if I just have any... I can glue any kind of piece down I want for the other side. And we'll just overhang it a little bit. So it kind of looks more roof-like. And then we got that. It's coming together nicely. And <laughs> no, it was not expensive as a pizza. The pizza was the the pizza was the most. But I we got a lot of pizza. And we froze a bit to um, save for later. Probably shouldn't be having that much pizza. Um. Yeah, you did call it. Um. My wife should have a little bit of a gluten sensitivity. It's not terrible. But if I eat too much, I do get um, kind of weird. But sometimes I just binge, especially these times, because um, I just don't care. Uh, okay, how's that looking? It's looking pretty good. So we got our tiles lined up. One more on this side. We'll do one side at a time, that way we can kind of eyeball it and keep it even. And like I said, you don't need too much glue. Um, hmm, maybe I should do it this way. This one's dribbling down a bit. I did actually use too much glue in this one. It's kind of dribbling down. That's okay, we'll fix it later. One more kind of thing here. There we go. Okay. Kind of like that. Try to keep it even. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And make sure it's not twisted. Okay. And then we got the final strip on each side. And then we'll be kind of done. We have to put one more strip of tile down the middle, um, kind of capping it off. And I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. But these, these are like the easiest way to make, that I know, to make roofs. Um, for other style buildings, like European styles, it's kind of annoying because you'll probably have to do a bunch of... I mean, there's multiple ways to do it for those as well, but one way I've seen is just cutting a bunch of either popsicle sticks or making a bunch of foam shingles, but then you have like individual shingles, especially if you're trying to do that like fairy tale kind of uh, snow white uh, cabin look. You got to cut every individual shingle and line them on just like you're a roofer, a miniature roofer. Um, and that's just way too time consuming for most people. So this is a really nice alternative if you're going for that, uh, Mediterranean Spanish Roman look. And there we go. So you can see we've, uh, made it uh, made a nice little roof there and we've got one more strip to go down the middle and for this one it's pretty easy you just cut cut two corrugated sections so you have a little valley in between i'll just go ahead and do that oops So you have kind of a strip strip like that. I just cut two quarter gated sections. And then what you want to do is you want to kind of try to fold it down the middle. So you got to kind of bend it. Um, do people notice? Uh, yeah, there's definitely people who notice. Um, 
I think. <laughs> but if they don't notice, yay for me, because this takes a lot less time. Um, yeah, usually at that point, I don't know. If I'm lying individual shingles, I'll probably do something else. I'd rather do like, uh, I don't know, like um, painting something, some miniature. Rather than lying individual shingles on a roof. Because I have quite a bit of time, but I don't have that much time. Alright. So you can see I've kind of bent it into shape. Um, I'll cut it into shape. I'll cut it to length now. Yeah, unless it's side by side. Well, you can kind of tell with the style. So this, this style is not very... It's not very Europe... Uh, well, it's Spanish, but it's not very medieval, I would say. It's more... Like, you can't really make this look like wood wood tiles. Uh, or wood shingles, I should say. Um, it's definitely a tile method. And did I cut that too short? No, it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, okay, so I just kind of bent it into shape so you can kind of see. Uh, so it's kind of like the single tile, and this will just go down the middle. So I'm just going to put a strip, some glue down the middle of this. And some might drip out, but that's okay. We'll, we'll wipe it up later. Let's make sure I get edges. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's too much glue. Just make sure uh, I get the edges of this. And we'll cap this off like so. And hopefully it should stick. Hold that there for a few minutes. And we'll have a nice tile roof. At least the structure of tile and then painting it is super easy too. You just paint it and then you dry brush it and it's done. A few washes and then it's done. Um, super, super easy to paint it. And because it's cardboard, it already has that brown base color, so you don't even have to penetrate. The paint doesn't even have to penetrate too much. It's just, um, like, you know, like, painting on white's a pain sometimes because, um, white or black, actually, because the, uh, depending on what color you use, you'll have to do several layers for it to cover up the base. But this way, and it's brown, so it's kind of close to the terracotta color already. So you don't have to worry about putting on thick coats of paint, or, or several coats of paint, I should say. And that's pretty much. I'm just going to get some, uh, do I have some paper towel? I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some paper towel and just wipe off the ex excess glue. just wipe off some of this glue that's squeezing out. Oops. Put the scissors there so the focus doesn't go wonky again. I'm just cleaning off this glue. Uh, there we go. Should be good. Now you really want to make this kind of hold, so I might weight it. I'll just put some something heavy. Ah, I have some tape measure here. I'll just put this on. Just so it weighs down a little bit. Then when it glues, it'll be um, ready to go. So, let's check our building and see how it's holding up. Put this in the middle here. Um, how's the glue? It's getting a little hard now, so we can probably... I'm just going to say we're going to do it. We can probably go ahead and... Uh, put the stucco on the outside of this and while the other one dries we can uh, we can do the same once it's dry yeah no we don't need to paint it brown because it's you're right it's already brown so like what I, I do is paint it I'll paint it this color um, which is kind of a ready uh, earthy color 
think Mars. Um, but yeah, okay, so now we're gonna do the um, stucco part. Um, and what I'm using for this is just, I'll just show it. It's basically something called non-sanded grout. And they didn't have a small one, so I just got a big, big one of this. Um, non-sanded grout. The brand I'm using is Polyblend. I don't think it matters. Um, but this one was nice because it had different colors. So I got to choose this, uh, this color here, which is kind of close to the stucco, at least the, the base of the stucco that I want. Um, and this is basically just dry powdered grout with no sand in it. Um, so essentially it's concrete. So it makes the building very durable for one. Um, and it gives a nice weight to it because it is basically concrete. It doesn't feel like a rickety foam house anymore. Um, it's a nice, uh, it gives a nice weight to it and a good heft. Um, but yeah, we'll mix some of this up. Um, just mixes with water and then you can just paste it on the side and I'll show you how we do that. Um, and this is not really uh, my idea at all. Um, I think I first saw it. A few people, a few people do it, but I think I first saw it on Black Magic Craft. I think he has a pretty big YouTube channel um, doing all sorts of crafting. Um, so yeah, he he did like the the grout method, and it looked like it worked pretty good. So um, I'm using it for this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be right back. I've just got to mix the grout um, and add some water. So once I've done that we'll go ahead and start putting that on. So I'll be right back.
All right, so welcome back. Um, so I just mixed it um, here. Kind of looks like chocolate mousse. Um, and I've just kind of mixed it. You can follow the directions on whatever grout you have um, in the box, but I've just kind of eyeballed it myself just to get the right consistency so it doesn't sloop off. Um, and hopefully this should be okay. Um, I'm gonna see right there. So we're just gonna let this sit a little bit just to like settle and then we'll mix it again. The instructions say to let it mix it and then let it sit 10 minutes and then mix it again. I didn't do that the first time, but we'll do it. It's a little thin, so maybe we'll let it set a little bit. Um, and then we'll mix it again and slap it on. But yeah, in the meantime, I can show you kind of the progress had with these trees. I'll just put this, uh, just put this over here, put this tree in front. So this is kind of um, not quite the end product. Um, we'll probably put a little bit of uh, static grass and, and stuff. Um, and then, but the, the steps to that are basically, I start out with a kind of slab of this foam. And this is, the foam I'm using is just the soft foam. Um, so it's bendable. I don't really know what this is called, but it's like they use it for like cosplay a lot. Um, so I'm told, but you can kind of use this. And then what I've done is I've just, this is a kind of midway piece. I've just poked the palm trees into here. So we're going to do that with this piece, um, here. We're just going to poke some palm trees in there. I've got array of just loose palms and this is how they came um they have little uh pokey things at the end so i'll probably do maybe i'll do three or four probably do one one palm tree here and we're just gonna poke it through it's a bit tough um because this is like soft plastic and it doesn't poke that well but if you kind of work at it you can eventually get it through and why I like to do this is because is because whoa I'm gonna lock the focus for this there we go so it doesn't go all over the place um, I like to poke it like this because yes it's EVA foam thank you Alex um, EVA foam is the one. I couldn't remember the name. But it takes a little bit of work to poke it, but once you do, it gives a nice tight fit like that. And then you have the bottom, so I'll just clip off, clip off this little nib at the bottom. And then we're going to glue the, all this later. So we have one kind of palm in there, and we'll just do a few more. Uh, maybe we'll do I don't know, where do you want to put this here? We have a few trees. I think I'm going to save the big one for something else. So maybe we'll do four here. And we'll do like... We'll do this one here. And again, I'm just eyeballing it, kind of. There's no really perfect way. They're just trees. Oh, you did for cosplay or uh, other other um, other uses. There we go. And then maybe we'll put if we do this. Does that look good? Or does this look good? Yeah, maybe we'll put the small tree here. That one went in easily. That's good. Just gonna snip that off, and then we're going to um, just uh, put the last one in. We'll put this like kind of over here, 
This one will be a bit tougher because I think it's a bit thicker. It's not as pokey. You know what? We're going to use the hobby knife to kind of give it a helping hand. Because I think it's right... Oh, no. It's not quite over the uh, um, price tag. There we go. And I'll snip that off. And then we got kind of a foam... Uh, Foam base. Ooh, armor pieces for D&D. Yeah, I was looking, I actually saw something like that on Twitter. Was it today, yesterday? Um, how people like curve it around and make armor. It's really cool. Um, you can like spray paint the e EVA foam and, or EVA foam and uh, bend it around into armor pieces. Um, apparently it works really good. I've never tried it, but it seems like it works good. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on these the bottom of these trunks and then we're just going to stick them back in where they belong right at home in the sand well there's no sand yet but it's coming i'm just going to put them in there Lola, I'll be so excited if you just come one day in a full suit of EVA foam armor. I actually, in fact, I'm holding you to it now. I, I think I think it's something the group has to see. Um, all right, there we go. And we got one more. Oh, I have a, I think I have a heat gun. If you want to borrow it. Um, I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure I have one. For some unknown reason. <laughs> my dad, when I moved, my dad gave me all these tools. He's like, you need this, you need this. You definitely need this. You'll, you'll never know. This will always come in handy. And I don't think I've ever used the heat gun. Maybe I've used it once. I, I don't remember. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you'll make my dad happy if, <laughs> if I still have it. I don't know if I returned it to him or not. Um, but I'll check. I'll check if I have one. Okay, so this is just going to dry. Um, I'll just set this over here to dry. I'll have a nice kind of treescape. Um, and we'll... Oh, yeah, we'll check our... We'll check this again because it should be... There we go. Now it's... Uh, this is starting to thicken up, so it looks good that we paste it on. Now, what we do here is I've got a bit of dried. So this is what it looks like. If you can see dry, um, it's kind of this powdery stuff. And now you want to be careful when you're working with it because you should be using goggles. I'm not because it can get in your eye. Um, and you want to make sure it doesn't, it's concrete, so it can get messy and ruin things. So you want to make sure it doesn't get on your like clothes and stuff. And I'm just going to try to be very careful um, that I don't do that. But maybe we'll start with this side. See, this, this glue is already drying up a lot, so um, that's good. And we're just going to put this goop, kind of goop it on. and get rid of some of the excess kind of just spread it on like cake and we'll make sure it covers all the white parts up and we'll just do that so you can kind of just spread it on as best you can and it's okay if you're a little messy because you can clean it up later just as just as long as you got all the white parts on one side covered up and you can it sticks pretty well so and it's a quite a good pigment so you don't have to do it too thick probably did that a little bit thick there um, just want to make sure it's all covered and the window I kind of want to make it a little little not round but rounded corners and then just want to leave it like that and then 
what you do is you grab some of this powder and this makes a nice textured effect effect and you just want to sprinkle this kind of on just sprinkle it and maybe you want to use gloves when you do this um, I actually don't have any gloves that I can throw away otherwise I would be doing that but it's probably a good idea and you want to just put this on Sprinkle it on the outside. That's probably enough. We'll gently tap the excess off. And then maybe use a maybe use just some paper towel to kind of press it down. Just so it presses kind of into the side of the building. And you can also looking at it, you can also kind of just judge what kind of texture you want, but you can also use the, the end of the spoon or whatever using a spatula or a hobby tool and kind of tap it down and spread it around depending on what kind of uh, texture you want. But I'll probably just kind of spread it around so a little bit's broken off, a little bit's kind of stuck on there. And that looks pretty good. So that's one side done, just like that. Um, don't even have to wipe too much off. And then we'll let that sit a little bit more and we'll do the other side. Looks pretty okay though, it's probably not gonna slide off, but just to be safe, we're just gonna let that go. Um, so with this, you're gonna have to, because it's, oh, I'm already getting this on my clothes. It's not a good sign. This is like I'm baking all over again. Oh no. Um, yeah, with, with this stuff, you want to, um, after you put it on, because you, you didn't really wet the powdered part that you sprinkled on, you're gonna have to go over it again. Once it's like dry, a little more dry, uh, then it's set a little bit. You wanna go over it lightly, very lightly with some water. So it activates the outside. And then after that, it should dry hard like concrete. And then after everything is said and done, um, you want to go over it again. Once it's dried like 24 hours, you want to go over it again in uh, either Mod, Pod, Mod Podge or uh, like watered down PVA. And you just want to seal it. Otherwise, you'll probably get a lot of dust. That's what's happened to me. You'll get a lot of dust coming off of it. Um, it'll kind of crumble away unless you like seal it. Um, but after you do that, it's going to dry nice and hard. Um, and then it should look real good. All right, so we're gonna continue. I think we're good with this side. We're gonna continue with the back side. Now we're just gonna do another layer. I know, yeah, it's like, um, I'm glad my wife's not watching yet. She will be joining shortly, but I don't think she'll go back and rewatch that part. So we're safe for now. Um, like my wife would care anyway. Um, okay, she'll be like, you idiot, you got it on your clothes. Um, okay. There we go. So we're just doing, this is, this is quite a thick layer, so maybe we'll try to spread it out evenly. Didn't expect it to be quite this thick, that's okay. It will really sell the effect. We'll try to scoop some away as best we can. Um, there we go. And then we'll sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And just sprinkle a bit more. Just so it looks good. You can get, uh, I can get most of it, so most of it's covered. And then you want to tap the excess off. Tap, oh, tap, tap, tap. And then, maybe we won't use the paper towel this time. Maybe we'll just use the spoon to kind of tamp it. See how that works. Okay. Tap it down, looks pretty good. Making kind of a mess here, but that's okay. You can also kind of spread it out if you want to, like, 
make some parts to kind of slough off. Give it different textures. But that looks pretty good like that. Oops. What did I do there? There we go. All right, now we're just gonna let that set a little bit and then we'll be moving on. So we're almost done this stucco. Uh, we're gonna check our roof here maybe. See how it's doing. Should be almost dry now too. So it's nearly dry. So we're just gonna set this aside for a minute and then we're gonna do the same thing to the roof. So we're gonna do it on the edges of the roof so it matches the building below. It should look pretty nice. I'll just use a little bit. Kind of get in there, cover up all the white parts. Just like that. And then I'll sprinkle a little more of this dry powder on top. And then we'll just tap it down, kind of spread it around. So it looks like I've made it even thicker, thicker batch than I did last time, which I didn't mean to do, but it just came out that way. So hopefully it dries okay. Um, I'll let you know if I run into any problems for next stream, um, but I'm thinking it should be okay. And while we're here, we'll just do the other side too. Just put it on. Spread it evenly. This part doesn't need to be super thick. But already you can kind of feel the nice weight to it. I'll just scrape off whatever I don't use. Just like so. Scrape off a little bit more so it looks like the tiles are slightly overhanging. And then sprinkle, sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And I would follow the maybe. Maybe don't do what I'm doing. Maybe uh, maybe wear gloves. Because I think this is a little bit corrosive. <laughs> I think that's what it said on the box. But Anyways, use at your own risk. And I think that should be good. Looks pretty good. I'm just going to set that down over here. And we'll get we'll get going with the other side. This is drying quite fast now, which is nice. We'll just get going with this side. And we're gonna spread it around again, getting it uh, over the window, but not through the window. Spreading it around. Be a little bit more delicate on this side so I don't have one big giant clump that I have to deal with. That's looking good. It covers the um, covers the white quite well, so I like I like that I don't have to paint. The, with this method, it's, you save a lot of time painting because essentially all you have to do is dry brush. Um, you just have to dry brush the, um, the kind of raised parts, that's it. And then maybe some washes down below, but you don't really have to paint the whole thing. Just a quick dry brush and a few washes and that's it. And you don't even have to wash the whole thing, it's just the very base. Um, a little bit more dried stuff. There we go. And then temp, temp, temp. And we'll just kind of put it, spread it around. That looks good. We've got one more side. This side's a little tricky because I have to hold it. The other side I can't let, let down. Um, can you guys see? 
kind of see there. Hopefully you can see a little bit. But uh, I gotta do this before I can put it down. And then I'll hopefully, shouldn't slide down the wall once I put it vertically. If you do your um, grout thick enough, it won't slide down whoop, when you set it upright. If it's too thin, it might slop down to the floor. So I've tried to do it a little bit thicker so it doesn't do that. And hopefully it can just dry nice and easy in an upright position. Make sure I get it all all covered. Just like so. Just like so. Okay. Just sprinkling a little bit more this on here. Well, it's drying pretty quick. Maybe it's too thick. Hopefully it cures okay, we'll find out. And looks pretty good, it's nice and crumbly. I'll we'll do a little bit more. breaking it up. That looks pretty good. Got the door frame there. Just inspect it, make sure you didn't miss any spots. But it looks pretty good. I'll just set it down gently. Like so. Um, and then that is that part done. I am going to be right back. I'm going to wash my hands so I don't get dried concrete on them um, and I'll do that pretty quickly and then I'll come back I'll bring this over I'll just set this over here oh hello hello welcome welcome thanks for joining I know it's your break so really really appreciate you coming um, I'll just show you what we've done um, so what we've done is we've we've Hang on, I'll be right back. I'm going to just wash my hands and then I can show you everything. There we go, that's better. So, um, we're making something similar to this. I'll turn this back on so you can kind of see. Um, basically, this um, kind of Spanish style hovel or uh, terracotta roof house. Um, we're just making another one. And what we've done so far is cut cut this uh, foam board into shape and we've just glued it with some PVA glue or wood glue. Um, and then after we do that, after it's dried, we use this stuff called non-sanded grout, um, which I have here and I've mixed here. And we just kind of layered that around the edge of this building. Um, and then we sprinkled some of the dry grout over top and that made a nice, uh, it makes a nice stucco texture. And for the roof, we just did the same thing on the sides. Um, so like so, and then I won't stick that together because it might actually concrete together. Um, but for the, this part, we've actually, this is just, um, corrugated cardboard, which I've pulled off a pizza box and I ripped one of the, like the paper sides off. Um, so we've just used that to kind of, uh, act as our roof and that's drying currently and this is drying currently 
but yeah um next time we will uh paint it up but i don't think we can do it this time because it takes a little bit of time to dry but right now we're going to work on our palm trees there we go so we have just glued this kind of grove of palm trees here um, but we have a little bit more to work on we've got this kind of patch here um, that we can work on a little bit and we've got this uh, this little patch over here so I think maybe uh, since we have this grout here maybe we're gonna go ahead and use it so we have a little bit left over and we're just gonna make some to weigh it down <laughs> yeah it's like it's it is like out of assassin's creed that's like the perfect uh perfect reference for these type of houses um it's also these these kind of houses would also be probably be good for like you'd have to do it a different style but you could also make like um japanese style and paint it differently japanese style houses on those like um tile roof houses as well um that would probably be a good method to use this on because it's kind of similar. Um, you just have to like shape the roofs a little bit differently, um, but you can definitely use the same me method with, and I'll probably do that one day um, with, with pizza boxes. So I'm just gonna try lying some of this. Uh, I don't know how much I'm gonna use. I don't know if I'll cover the whole thing. Should I cover the whole thing with this stuff? I don't know. This is This is kind of a new, new thing that I'm doing here. I think it'll work. Oh, you know what? We're gonna, I have some sand, so we're just gonna sprinkle some sand on top. And then, let's focus there. Gonna sprinkle some sand on top of this later, I think. And that should be great. And we're just spreading this. This is drying pretty fast, but we're just spreading this grout along, not making it too thick like before. Um, hopefully, this will work out well see how it does do it's it adds a nice weight to it which i like because the one annoying thing about uh, making terrain of foam and and paper and generally light materials is that they have no satisfying weight to them um so when you add it, it makes it feel more expensive <laughs> or like it's it's made of quality Um, I'll just try to get the edges here real quick. Just kind of, I'm just kind of being messy about it. Don't have to be too fussy. And hopefully this works out. Hopefully it sticks to the foam. I haven't tested this. This is new. Uh, we're in uncharted territory right now, so we'll see. See how it works. But that's the, that's the fun thing about crafting. You just experiment, see how see what works. Um, see how many fails you get. I've gotten a lot of fails in the past, especially I've been doing this since I was a little kid. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm the best at it, but I'm okay. Um, but the stuff I made when I was like a teenager was just it was just crap. It was, uh, I guess at the time it seemed cool, but now I look at it and it's like, ugh, what is this? What is this amateur work? <laughs> yeah, at least I've progressed a little bit. Okay. So is that probably, that's probably a good enough to look like, uh, look like a little piece of land. Um, okay, see you, see you, Manny. Uh, thanks for dropping by. Appreciate you coming on your break. Um, 
Again, we'll, we'll do this another time, so hopefully you'll catch the next part of it. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, you can watch the replay once once uh, once you're done. Um, all right, for the palm trees, we're going to go ahead and get grab some sand. And then... Uh, and then we're going to sprinkle it on top before it's dry. So I'll be right back. I'll get some sand. Um, yeah, I'll be right back and get some sand. Okay, we got our sand. Um, we've got some other things too. We've got some grass that I'll put on later. And we got some flock that we might use. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, what do I do with my failures? Some I still have and I just use even though they don't look that great. Um, a lot of them were big and I lived in a house growing up, but uh, I live in an apartment now. And especially when I was in university, I lived in even smaller apartments. So I think my mom got rid of a lot of the, uh, a lot of my old failures, which is fine. Oh, hello, Mia. Welcome. Thanks for dropping by. We're just doing the palm trees right now. We're just sprinkling some, uh, sprinkling some sand on this grout. And we're trying a new technique where we sprinkle Use this grout mix and sprinkle some. It's non-sanded, so we'll have to add the sand to the grout mix. And then we'll tamp it down, and hopefully it should look pretty good. Now, we'll ha we will have to paint this one. But actually, it's, it's actually looking kind of a nice color already. It's kind of a nice beachy color. But we'll go ahead and paint it later on. Um... But yeah, it's looking, uh, looking decent. Just add some texture here. I don't know if I have anything else to add. Could add a nice rock. But I don't know where I... I don't have a rock. Do you guys have any ideas? Um... With what to add? I'd like to make it like kind of a... Maybe I'll save it for this one. But it would be nice to have like a nice feature... Feature area in this little grove. Terrain grove. Oops, that's not working well. So don't, so rule, one rule is don't tap the uh, sand into the grout, uh, with, with the, with the grout, because, uh, it's looking like Cool Whip. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to mess it up anymore and try to fix it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Hopefully the, the sand solidifies and the grout kind of entrenches it and then it's um stuck in there um but we'll see it might be a failure might not with this one i just did so that that's that one done oh i'm running out of space here got so many projects on the go so uh whoop -de -doop. this one over here if you can see this one i just i just laid pva glue down and i sprinkled sand on it so instead of the grout, this one just has PVA. And for the weight, I used a washer and glued it at the bottom. That makes sure it doesn't it doesn't tip over too bad. Um, yeah. Now I wish you had rocks. <laughs> well, I probably have rocks somewhere, but we can add it later. There's, there's like no no need to add it now. I can always put it in later. Um, I've got a lot of grout mix, so we can, uh, we can add, uh, I can mix some more up later and add it. 
All right, mm, what can we do now? So we've done the trees. It's kind of like the stage we're at with that. We can't really progress any for, further because this one's drying. Um, we can, however, finish this one. And for this one, all we need to do, I've already painted it. So all we need to do is sprinkle on some flock and static grass. So, um, just gonna, I'm just gonna squirt some of this wood glue. Now you can use wood glue, you can use PVA. It's probably a little better to use PVA um, for most applications, just because wood glue sometimes tends to dry yellow, especially if it's thick, while PVA school glue tends to dry a little more clear. Um, so if I'm really concerned about a yellow kind of color showing, I won't use the wood glue as much. Um, if it's spread thinly, it should dry clear, but here it doesn't matter because um, this is ground cover um, and the, the base is already kind of browny yellowish, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, we're going to put something called flock on this base. So we'll do two layers. We'll do two layers of vegetation. Um, the first layer is flock, which is basically kind of green. I don't even know what it's made of. Foam? I don't know. It's made of something. Um, but it's basically like green specks. And I'll just lay that down like so. We'll put that here. So that's the flocking done. Um, we're having a flocking good time. And then we'll put the static grass on next. Seal that up. Poof. I flocked myself. Um, how long does one clump of trees take? Uh, well, I don't know. So you saw me just, I just poke it in. I just, I just poke this in today on this base. Um, so that took what five minutes, and then I spread, I spread that on there. So that took another five minutes, and then painting and flocking probably takes another five to ten minutes so i would say you could probably burn through i mean you can't all do it at once because you have to let things dry but all in total i would say one clump takes no more than 30 minutes um if you're working quickly and efficiently so flock is flock is a kind of a granular green, I think it's dyed, and I'm not sure what it's exactly made of, but it's a granular kind of material um, that's like basically sprinkles that you put on. Static grass is like little fibers, which have green and red and yellow um, um, dyes in them. So with the flock, I use it as a ground cover, so it kind of makes it uh, makes it look like underlying moss or just under turf. And then with the static grass, you put that on top because sometimes static grass doesn't you'll see through it, so you can see like the uh, the brown earth underneath. So I use the flock as a first layer, and then I'll add static grass, which is basically these fibers that have been. Um, that are, well, they have been activated by static electricity and they um, stand upright because they're all staticky is my scientific explanation of it. Um, so we're gonna do that now and we're gonna put the static grass just over top. So we'll add another tiny drop of glue just so the static grass can um, sit on top. And you can do this. You can do this in two steps, or you can do it in one step, like I'm doing. It's a little more messy. Um, 
in one step because when you do the second phase the flock kind of mixes with the glue but that's okay and then the fun part is just sprinkling this on so we can just sprinkle it on maybe kind of tamp it down uh, some there we'll turn it and we'll sprinkle it on maybe tamp it down just kind of poke it in and then tap it tap the rest back in and then what I like to do is blow it so it stands it stands upright so it really looks like grass and there and there you got a little so you'll notice the white glue uh, is still white but it will dry almost clear might be a little bit yellow but you won't be able to notice it um, especially spread this thinly it will probably be pretty clear and then that is a completely done um, clump of trees which we will uh, seal later on with just some varnish to make sure the flock and status static grass um, stay where they are um, but aside from that or just check our houses make sure it's not concreting itself so it has a nice weight to it it's very nice um, oh close up okay I'll do a close up hang on We'll do a close-up of this tree. So you can see here how... I don't know if you can see it, but it's... Uh, it's standing upright somewhat. And it looks... Uh, Looks pretty good. Okay, and we're done with the flock and the static grass. So we'll just uh, so the static grass. I've it lasts forever. I've had this container for years. Unless you're doing big terrain pieces, if you're just doing it for little bases like this and miniatures, I've had this over. I don't know. I had this at least 15 years, maybe 20 years. Um, and I still haven't used a quarter of it. It lasts a really long time. If you're doing big terrain pieces, it's, you're going to use more, more of it, like a whole table. But uh, it's a good investment. Um, that I've just broken up popsicle sticks and I've placed them. So we're going to do that now because we can do that now and then we'll paint it later. Um, And that should be pretty easy to do. I'll just move this out of the way. Maybe we'll move this up here so you guys can see a bit easier. And then we'll uh, use some popsicle sticks to just lay down, lay down the house. And then I'm just uh, using this to kind of break it. And that way it's a little bit more organic. And I'll kind of eyeball it. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just eyeball it. So that's probably the right length. Looks good. And we'll do some of this length. And then we'll do some that are uh, not as long. And we'll mix it up a bit. All right. Just use this for measuring. And we'll probably do half this way and half the other way. Again, we'll just measure 
And I'm being really rough with this. It doesn't need to be fancy. Because these are little tiny hovels. Not fancy at all. They can be roughed up a little bit. And we'll do a little bit more. Whoop. There we go. And we're almost done this. And then we'll make some. We'll use these end scraps here because we might as well not waste. And then we'll just make the floorboard pattern so it doesn't look too uniform. These should be all roughly the same size. And just lie them like this. Okay. I think I'll do one more. We have one more left, so there we go. Um, I'm gonna check my building, make sure it all looks good. Stucco's looking good. Got a little pizza box here that's just dump the excess uh, powder from the inside out. But I'll just start lying down floorboards now. Um, and I think I can just lie. I think I can just brush glue all on the inside and make it easier. Just pour that in, brush it around, just so the whole floor is covered. And glue, just like that, there we go. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then we'll just start lying, lying our flooring down. Something I also did as a kid, reluctantly. Helping my parents renovate, lying flooring. Um, and now I'm doing it as an adult, just on a miniature scale. So we're not being too picky with the pattern here. Just kind of not the most complex floorboards, but it works. And it's okay if there's a bit bit of gaps here and there. It's completely fine. Maybe for the end we'll just split this one. Put like so, and put that in there. Come on, squeeze in there. Yeah, looks pretty good. So we're done our floor. Just lift this up carefully. Show you guys. And I think. Hang on, I screwed up a piece when I did that. Oh boy. I gotta check that I didn't screw up on any, any other pieces. But it looks like there's a little... Hmm, I wonder if I can get away with it. I'm just gonna use this, this brush now. I'm gonna use this spoon. Oh god. Hey, right, you know what? That's done. Okay, that's good. Um, perfect. We are basically done for today. I've got this done. I ha that has to dry. This has to dry before we paint it. Um, can't put any more stucco on. We'll figure out an idea for doors next time. And then we'll finish off our, we'll finish off painting this one. And I'll probably do something with this one as well next time. Um, but yeah. Any questions um, before I sign off?
think uh, I think I've got myself in a rather mess here today, but uh, I won't wear these pants next time. <laughs> I will still be wearing pants though. I'm not going to be one of those uh, one of those streamers. Um, we all know they're out there. We all know they are. Yeah, I think uh, it looks pretty good. I like the roof today. It looks uh, it looks pretty decent. Just to give you a kind of a semi look, we're gonna. You can go that way, or you can go this way too. Both ways work. Yeah, next time you'll be able to see it all come together, kind of all in one go. Um, looks good now, but next time we'll uh, finish painting it and we'll do the fine details. Um, once this dries a little bit, I'm going to seal it with water. Um, but that'll be all ready for next time. And then we're going to... Uh, you want to wait at least 24 hours for this to harden before you work with it again. Um, and depending on the grout, you might have to wait longer and how you mixed it. Um, but last time I just did it overnight. I, I did all this part um, one day, I waited overnight, and then I painted it the next day. So we can't do that today, unfortunately, but we'll do it next time. But yeah, um, okay, I guess that's it, guys. Uh, thanks so much for joining. And next time we'll finish this off. We're gonna be painting it. Um, we're gonna be painting the bases and flocking and maybe adding some doors and windows. We'll see, we'll see if we have time for that. Um, but yeah, that's basically what we're gonna do next time. Um, thanks so much and we'll uh, call that a night. Thanks Mia, <laughs> thanks Lowlight.